In this video, we'll be talking about different techniques you could use to persist states of the widgets inside your bottom navigation bar. Persisting the state of pages in the tab layout is important because this gives your app a better user experience. No user wants the text field to be cleared simply because the switch tabs and return back. This could be frustrating. In this example we have here, the state of the widgets is lost whenever we switch between tabs. We use set state inside the untapped method to switch the selected page to the selected tab. This process removes the current widget from the tree and when you switch back to it, a new instance is created in the tree. This gives the widget a fresh new state and our progress is lost. Another thing you can also notice here is the scroll position. If you scroll over here, because this is a list view, and we switch the tab and come back, you can see the scroll position is also lost. So we'll cover different techniques we could use to solve this. And you might be wondering why we have only two tabs. You can see the space between them looks kind of awkward, right? Well, that's social distancing at play because widgets life matter too. Okay, let's get serious. In this video, I'll show you three ways we could persist UI states when using the bottom navigation bar in Flutter. The first method is to use the indexed stack widgets. This widget simply lays out a list of widgets on top of each other and display only one widget on the given index. I'll wrap the contents of the body with this widget. In here, we set the index to the selected index. The default selected index is zero, just like we have over here. So it will display the first page. Next, we pass in the pages list as its children. And this pages list is over here, which is just the list of the two widgets we have. We use the spread operator to do this instead of using a for loop. So this is the basic setup of the index stack. Let's try it out. Let's also scroll and see if it retains the scroll position. And you can see it also retains the scroll position. This works pretty well, but the downside to this approach is that all the widgets inside the index stack are all mounted at once. This might not be good for performance. So what if you had like five tabs and they all make network requests? This would be a waste of resources if we end up not viewing other tabs. So we want a way to load widgets on demand and save their states when they are unmounted from the widget tree. That is when we switch the tabs with set states. This leads us to the next method, the use of page storage class. The page storage class is used by scroll views, just like the list view to save their scroll positions. Let's update the code. First, we assign the key properties of both widgets to unique values. These key properties are already included when you create your class and it gives us an error here. So let's confirm if we added them and you can see it was not added. So I'll quickly add it right now. So keys are used to uniquely identify widgets in the widget tree. They may contain some information and methods too. The Flutter framework uses them to know how to replace a widget in the widget tree. Most of the times, Flutter adds keys when needed, but in this case, we are adding a special key value because of what we want to implement. Yeah, we use the page storage key because it stores each width and identifier the page storage bucket can read. And that leads us to the next line, the page storage buckets. And this is simply a bucket to store the keys. You see how all this comes together in the next few steps. Finally, we wrap the content of the body with a page storage widget and assign the buckets we just created to it. I know this might seem a bit confusing, but in summary, we just let Flutter store some state information of the widgets 
and provide these values when these widgets are recreated. Save your work and let's try it out and do a hot restart. So I'll change the states and scroll a bit and let's switch the tab and come back. We can see that the list view scroll position is maintained, but the counter value is lost. Now, why is that so? Remember, I mentioned that the page storage is used by the list view to save its scroll position. This happens implicitly. We have to explicitly save the counter state to the buckets. Let's update the code in the home page widgets to the following. First, we save the value of the counter inside the page storage.off method. The off method is readily available in the build context in the widget tree. We use the write state method and pass in the current context, the data we want to store, in this case, the counter, and finally, an identifier that would be used to access this data from the buckets. Then inside the init state method, we use the read state method to access the content of the counter value identifier from the buckets. If this returns null, then we pass in zero. So that is why we do this check because sometimes it might not get this value and it will return null. So we initialize it to the original value of the counter, which is zero. Save your work and let's do a hot restart. Let's go ahead and try it out. Cool, you can see both the scroll position and the counter state is retained. This currently works fine, but personally, I feel we have too many boilerplate code just to store the counter states. I would prefer a way that does this automatically for us. And this leads us to the third and final method, the use of a page view widget and the automatic keep alive client mixing. The page view is commonly used to create stuff like onboarding screens and slideshows. It takes in a list of widgets that can be navigated by swiping across the screen. I have set up the basic structure to use this widget. Here, yeah, we created a page controller, which would be used to programmatically interact with the page view. I initialized it inside the init state method and made sure I disposed it inside the dispose method. Disposing the controller is necessary to free up resources and prevent memory leaks. Next, the untapped method is updated to trigger the page view to jump to a particular page. This is done through the page controller.jump to page method. As the name suggests, it moves the page view to the index that is passed to it. Also, we added an on page change method that would set the selected index to the current index of the page view. This would be used to update the bottom navigation bar item when we swipe through the page view. Finally, we need to add the page view. Replace the body of the scaffold to the following. In here, we create a page view and pass in the pages list as a student. We also connect the page view to the controller we just created previously. Finally, we pass in the on page change method to the on page change property. This callback function will be triggered whenever the page views page changes. Over here, we set its selected index to the page views current index. This might look similar to the untapped method of the bottom navigation bar, but don't worry, you'll see why you need this soon. Currently, this would not save the state of the home page widget yet. In the previous method, we used the page storage but this time around, we'll be using the automatic keep alive client mixing. Now, go to the home page widgets definition and update it to the following.
In here, we add the automatic Keep Alive client mixing to the class. In that, mixins add features to a class by sharing new behaviors with the class, even though the classes are unrelated. The automatic Keep Alive client mixing simply has some features that decide if a widget should be kept in the widget tree even after they are unmounted, and this also includes the widget states. When using this mixing, you must do two things. First, the subclass must override the once keep alive getter. And yeah, we return true for the once keep alive, simply because we want this widget to be persisted. This notifies the mixing to keep this widget and its subtree alive. Secondly, the build method must call the build method of a superclass. And that's all the whole setup needed. Okay, let's go ahead and try it out. But first, save all changes, then do a hot restart. So let's go ahead and make some increments. And scroll this list view a bit. Then let's switch to the next page. And you can see this approach retains both the scroll position and the widget states. We can also swipe through the page view. And the active tab is updated in the bottom navigation bar. And this is simply because of that on page change callback we passed in. The page view wouldn't update the bottom navigation bar item if we did not call set states inside it. So you can see with this approach, there's no need to manually save the counter value since we're using the automatic keep alive client mixing, which persists the widgets and its states. So that will be it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, go ahead and click the like button. If you loved it, then do subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.